let's jump into problem eight to a, a production budget. We are asked to determine how many units the company needs to make in a given month or a given quarter. And to figure it out, our starting point is a sales budget. So we start by knowing what we're going to sell. And, and if you know, or you can anticipate what you're going to sell, that can inform what you need to make. And it's most basic level, right? If I know I'm going to sell 3000 units of whatever it is I make in, in January, I better make 3000 units to have them ready to sell, right? That's a great starting point. But why don't I just use the number? Why don't I say, well, I'm going to sell 3000 units. Well, therefore I better make 3000 units. And the reason is because you don't want to just sell exactly 3000 and then sell it and go well, too bad. I don't have any more. No, you want to have a little buffer built in. And also at the end of January, you don't want to start with zero in February. You want to have a few units ready to go. So on February 1st, when a customer walks in, you don't go, well, we're making our new ones for February. Now. No, you want to have an ongoing uh, production level and you want to have inventory ready to sell to customers. So that's what the production budget informs us on. Let's jump into it. Danny Company shows the following estimates for unit sales for the first quarter of its upcoming year. And you can see the month by month unit sales for January February, March, quarter one of whatever year. Uh, the company's required finished goods is equal to 20% of the next month's expected sales. So this is what kind of inventory level we're comfortable with. And what we say is uh, not only are we going to need to make the 3000 units, but we also want to have 20% of next month ready to go. We don't want to have our shelves empty. We want to have 20% of the next month's ready to go for the next month. Uh, that's what that sentence means. Uh, the company expects to begin January with 600 units in inventory. So it has some inventory ready to go from the previous uh, month. And the expected sales in April are 5,000. Well, that's going to inform what we want to end March with. But let's, let's jump into this. I think once you've done one line here, one month, it becomes very straightforward, but getting that first month is tricky. So let's get to it. Name of the company, three line title, Danny Company. Uh, name of the budget we're making. This is a production budget. And this gets dated for the month, for the year, in this case, for the quarter, for the quarter ended uh, March 31st. For the quarter ended March 31st. Okay, and then our headings are just the months, January, February, March, and our totals column. It's not really a total, it's a for the quarter column, and we'll explain that as we go. So I think a great starting point, if you're given units sold, that's a great starting point for most budgets. Let's start with units sold, and if we know what we're expecting to sell, so let's do January, right? And I, I actually like to say expected units sold because of course we don't know for sure, but this is what we're expecting. By the way, you can see I was a little bit sloppy there with my title. I, my like account title here, my line title, I don't expect students to get these word for word. And I find students that try to memorize, I need this exact wording they go wrong. It's the ones that sort of say directionally, what is happening on this budget? And you can even do these in different order to what I do. This is not like a gap financial statement where everything needs to be just so, in my opinion, maybe talk to your professor, but it, my view is if you are getting to the right outcome, following logical steps, that's fine. So anyway, I'll, I'll follow some logical steps here, but expect the units sold in January are, are 3,000. Well, if I'm expecting to sell 3,000, that's a good thing I got to make. 3,000, right? My production should be around 3,000. Uh, but I want to have extra inventory. The company requires finished goods inventory on hand equal to 20% of the next month's expected sales. So I got to have extra. And how much extra in January? Well, I want to have 20% of February ready to go. February is 3,500 multiplied by 0 0.2, 700. We would call that the desired ending inventory. Desired 
ending inventory. So our desired ending inventory here is 700 units. So, okay, I'm going to sell 3000 units. Plus I want to have 700 left over. I got a subtotal here of 3,700. I would call this my production needs, right? I need to have 3,700 units ready to go, right? The 3,000 I'm going to sell in January and the 700 extra I'm hoping to have left over for February. Well, the thing that could mitigate this is what if I enter January, I already had some inventory, which we should, right? We don't expect the cupboards to be bare. I already had 600 units in inventory beginning January. So I don't need to make those ones. Those are already ready to go. So I deduct the beginning inventory, uh, deduct beginning inventory. So our beginning inventory was 600 units. And this is my production. So my required production or desired production, if you want to call it that, like I said, I'm not, you know, required, desired, or if you just said production here, that would be good enough for me. Again, speak to your professor before you get too far in, in freestyling these ones, but I'm, I'm not too picky. If the student gets to 3,100, as long as the label is reasonable as to what happened, well, then, yeah, I think that's fine. Our required production here, though, 3,100. Now you'll notice no dollar signs on here. These are all units, right? This is units I'm planning to produce. Okay, so I'm planning to produce 3,100 units in January. Let's do February. And I think if you can, if you got that on January, it starts to flow. February, my uh, production. Well, I'm going to make 3,500 units. Plus, I want to have 20% of March ready to go. 4,500 times 20% is 900. So my total needs here are 4,400, but I have some beginning inventory from January. The beginning inventory for February is the same as the ending inventory from January. The ending inventory from January is 700. So I don't need to make that in February. If I, if I made extra in January as I planned, then uh, I don't need to make it in February. So that sort of gets deducted. 4,400 minus 700, that's 3,700. And there's February in the books. Let's do March. March is 4,500. My desired ending inventory for March, well, it's 20% of next month. And the question says the expected unit sales for April are 5,000. So it's going to be 20% of April. It's going to be 1,000 units. 4,500 plus 1,000. Subtotal here is 5,500. We deduct our beginning inventory. Well, the beginning inventory for March is the same as the ending inventory for February. There it is, it's 900. So I deduct 900. 5,500 minus 900 is 4,600. And there we have it. Now we just need the for the quarter column. And truthfully, this is where more students make mistakes than the other part. So once you practice this, you'll see the other part is actually not too bad. The for the quarter column has my most frequent mistakes and I'll point them out now. 3,000 plus 3,500 plus 4,500, it is 11,000 total. Our desired ending inventory for the quarter, this is where people make mistakes. They total it up. They go, oh, it's 2,600, right? Seven plus 900 plus 1,000, it's 2,600. No, no, no. Our desired ending inventory for the quarter is how much inventory do I want to have on hand at the end of the quarter? Well, what's the end of the quarter? It's March 31st. How much inventory do I want to have on March 31st? Actually, just 1,000 units, right? If I put 700 plus 900 plus 1,000, at no point does this company want to have 2,600 units of inventory sitting on the shelf. No way. Never, never, never. So a lot of students will put 2,600 here because they don't understand what they're looking at. The end of the quarter is the same as the end of March. I want to have 1,000 units sitting on my shelves at the end of the quarter, at the end of March. So that's the number I put. 11,000 plus 1,000 is 12,000. Now, what about the beginning? Well, same thing here. The beginning of the quarter, the quarter started on January 1st. What's my inventory on January 1st? 600 units. It's the, the same I began with at the beginning of the quarter, which was January. 12,000 minus 600 is 11,400. 
it's funny, you know, it's a funny mistake, but this one and this one are by far the most common mistakes I see as a professor. So that's something to keep your eyes open for. Don't make that common mistake if you're asked to do a production budget. But there you have it. That's our production budget. How useful is that? Because then if you know what you're going to make, you can know, well, how many employees do I need to have? How many hours can I give them? How many shifts can I give them? Uh, what do I need to order in terms of material? You know, I got to bring in my raw materials. How much raw material do I need? You can plan based on the amount of sales you have, how much you're going to produce. And a lot of your other costs and needs will be driven by this production budget, a very important budget. One I test all the time. And I got one last test question for you. Can you find one of those buttons and hit it for me? All right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.